Part One, Story One of Tales from Wagner by J. Walker McSpadden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part One, The Ring of the Curse. Story One, The Rheingold. Das Rheingold. Hundreds of years ago, in a wonderful time called the dawn of the world, there lived many strange beings which do not now exist. Gods and goddesses dwelt in the clouds that hovered above the mountain peaks. Great untamed giants roamed amid the valleys. Swarthy, misshapen dwarfs called Nibelungs toiled in the caves of the underworld, heaping up treasures of gold and silver which never did anyone any good. Ugly dragons crawled upon the earth while beautiful water nymphs lived in the rivers and seas lastly there were heroes and savage men who struggled together for the mastery in that far-off day when the world was in the making how the end came to all these strange things and how the reign of the gods finally ceased will be set down in this fourfold story i am about to tell you in the clear depths of the river rhine in germany once dwelt three water nymphs lovely maidens who were very like other maidens except that they passed their whole lives under the water and could not be seen by ordinary eyes fair were they in face and graceful in form their eyes beamed gladness for they had never known sorrow while their long golden hair floated about them like a garment or tossed upon the wave crest as they played some merry game of hide and seek amid the grottoes of their watery world they were called the Rhine Daughters, and thus in frolicsome play did they spend their days, free from all care save one. It was this care and the sorrow following close upon it that caused the present story to be told. Upon one of the highest rocks, deep down in the bed of the Rhine, was stored a great lump of pure gold, brighter and more dazzling than any other treasure ever known it was also more wonderful than any other gold because it contained the power of making its owner master of all the world this treasure had lain undisturbed in the river's bed for so long that it had come to be known as the rhine gold it was watched over by the rhine daughters in whose care their father had left it this was their sole duty to keep guard night and day lest some thief should come and steal the priceless treasure one bright morning the maidens seemed unusually merry they darted in and out the caverns with a speed which left the flying fish far behind they laughed and chattered and sang but glancing from time to time up at the precious rhine-gold to see if it still glittered upon its protecting crag presently their happy noise at play attracted a passer-by who clambered upon one of the jutting rocks to see what it was all about the newcomer stood in the greatest contrast to the three laughing girls he was a dwarf little and ugly and crooked with a humped back and long claw-like fingers to match the eager grasping look in his small eyes he was albrich of the race of the nibelungs the earth dwarfs who dug for treasure in the underground caverns and hammered and toiled without ceasing for the gold that never did them any good ho ho he exclaimed to the maidens a fair morning to you the nymphs started in alarm at the harsh croaking voice nor did their first sight of the visitor reassure them but they replied civilly enough a fair morning to you sir then one of them darted swiftly upward singing as she went guard well the gold twas just such a foe our father foretold nevertheless albrick had paid no attention to the gold so pleased was he by the nymphs and their gambols and they in turn losing their fear of the uncouth monster and willing to tease him asked him to catch them in their game of hide-and-seek this he tried to do but blinded by the unusual light and stumbling awkwardly over the rocks he could never keep up with their fairy-like antics first one and then another would come near him or ascend the rocks but it was always just beyond his reach finally their laughter and teasing made him angry and he stopped short refusing to be made sport of any longer just then a ray of sunlight filtered down through the water and struck the rhine-gold instantly it glowed as though it were a mass of flame reflecting a hundred shafts of light where one had smitten it the whole river-bed was illuminated by the glorious rays 
the astonished dwarf looked toward the source of this splendor and what he saw made his small eyes fairly bulge out with greed yet he concealed his amazement and waited to learn something about this splendid treasure without betraying his own interest fortune favored him his unspoken question was answered by the rhine maidens who surged upward with a glad cry of the rhine gold the rhine gold what is this rhine gold you are talking about asked the dwarf with a great show of indifference what haven't you ever heard of the wonderful rhine gold asked one of the maidens thoughtlessly we supposed it was famed over all the world but i dwell in the underworld and hear not the things which are spoken among men tell me of it i pray then the maiden forgot her father's warning to guard the treasure closely she also felt nothing but contempt for this awkward little man from whom they could so easily escape she told the secret of the gold in the words of a song the realm of the world to him shall it bring who out of this gold shall fashion a ring of magical power untold hm say you so said the dwarf keeping his excitement down by a powerful effort though his finger-nails fairly clawed into the flesh if your metal is as fine as all that why doesn't someone lay hands upon it and do all these great things sister sister be careful said another of the nymphs but the first only laughed and replied what can this silly old fellow do let us have some more fun teasing him then the third maiden floated gracefully near why doesn't some one seize the gold she repeated tis because no one has yet been able to pay the price what is the price this is it she answered listen he who forswears the might of love and all its pleasures manifold he only has the magic art to mould the ring from out the gold pish a pretty story you are telling me said the dwarf as though a little matter like doing without love should make a person master of the world he made a great show of scorn while he said these words but all the time he was edging quietly nearer the treasure but love is the greatest thing in the world said the first maiden no one can do anything without its wonderful aid why even you poor old fellow would dare not forswear it i would not dare forswear it eh? exclaimed the dwarf with a snap of his fingers and a wild laugh of triumph love forsooth what is love to me when gold is in question hark you rhine maidens i renounce love for ever be my witness and he sprang rapidly forward before the nymphs could prevent him clambered up the jagged rock and seized the coveted treasure our rhine gold our rhine gold shrieked the maidens but it was too late already he had disappeared in one of the clefts of rock leading to his cavernous home and though they darted after him they could not find him in the dark depths only his mocking laugh came back to them ho ho love when all the world shall be mine now we have already seen that the nymphs and the dwarfs formed only a part of the strange world so long ago at the very time when albrecht was stealing the gold and preparing to make the ring of power down under the earth there was an unusual happening in the home of the gods far up on the mountains for a long time wotan the greatest of the gods had desired a palace large enough to contain his kingly court but he could find no one strong enough to build it until on a day two giants from the valleys below came into his presence large were they of shoulder and thigh many times larger than ordinary men we have come to build your palace they said who are ye asked wotan looking piercingly at them with his single eye i am fafner the frost giant answered one i can rend all these rocks asunder and build your palace in a single night with the aid of my brother fasolt here wotan was overjoyed to find some one who would undertake his cherished plan what payment do you desire for this service he asked you must give me the hand of your beautiful sister freya answered fafner wotan frowned he desired the palace above all things just then for it would enforce his visible rule over the world but freya was his favourite sister moreover it was she who was the goddess of youth and beauty and who tended the tree of golden apples which kept the gods always young 
while wotan was frowning and pondering to himself his brother loki whispered in his ear let them build the palace we shall find another way out of the bargain now loki god of fire was the craftiest of all the gods so when wotan heard his whispered advice his brow cleared and he looked at the giants so be it he commanded build me the castle gainst another sunrise it shall be valhalla the supreme home of gods and men the giants bowed and went their way presently the sound of mighty blows was heard and terrific crashes as of the bursting asunder of rocks all the day and night the tumult continued while the earth shook to its very foundations the next morning the rising sun lit up a splendid spectacle there stood valhalla magnificent home of the gods upon the crest of a towering cliff its white walls gleamed and glistened its towers and buttresses were built of stones so large that they seemed placed for all eternity yet the whole mass appeared as light and graceful as a fairy vision beautiful wonderful cried the gods and goddesses in rapture let us take up our abode in our new home said wotan with the delight of a schoolboy but just then the two giants appeared clad in their shaggy skins of slain animals hold said fafner first give us in payment the goddess freya as you promised us that i cannot do replied wotan you must think of some other way for me to reward you not so exclaimed the giants angrily their hoarse voices making all the mountain quiver give us the maiden as you agreed else we shall tear down the palace quicker than we built it and they placed themselves on each side of the trembling freya touch her not cried two gods as they sprang forth to protect their sister do you not know continued one that i am thor god of thunder and that with one blow of my hammer i can crush you both and he raised his hammer threateningly but now the great wotan interposed in his turn restrain your fury he commanded stretching forth the dread spear of authority between the giants and the gods by this spear the word of wotan cannot be broken and unless fasolt and fafner agree to accept other reward they must e'en take our sister with them to the regions of frost at this command the contending ones fell back but there arose a low cry of fear from the lovely freya and a deep lamentation from the other gods for how could they live without their sweet sister she who gave them the apples of eternal youth meanwhile wotan had been casting his eyes impatiently from side to side he was looking for his crafty counsellor loki and wondering why he did not appear with his aid since he it was who had promised to find a way out of the bargain come decide said the giants again stepping forward only one hour more pleaded wotan i must confer with my counsellor who is just now absent only one hour then replied the giants send out messengers in search of loki god of fire commanded wotan let him be summoned instantly but at this moment who should appear but loki himself walking in unconcernedly and looking about in feigned surprise as though he were the last person any one would wish to see good morrow all he said airily this is a beautiful castle i see upon yon mountain height i have just been examining it from every side and upon my word it would defy even my arts to destroy it yes yes replied wotan impatiently beginning to be a little ashamed of his fine valhalla but that is not the point just now these giants demand our sister freya as their reward and you remember you promised to find a substitute for her the sly loki arched his eyebrows in mock surprise a substitute for her he exclaimed why how could that be possible i should think that fasolt and fafner would rather have her than all the treasures in the world is she not the goddess of youth and beauty at this the two gods thor and fro raised their weapons in great anger and would have fallen upon loki had not wotan restrained them he knew the cunning of the latter and was persuaded that loki had found a plan yes proceeded loki as calmly as though there had been no interruption all the riches in the world would not take the place of freya even the far-famed rhine-gold would hardly answer and speaking of the rhine-gold 
do you know that i have just heard a strange story while passing along the banks of the rhine i became aware of the sound of pitiful weeping and wailing i turned me about to see whence the doleful sound came and i beheld the three rhine daughters they were no longer joyous and carefree as was their wont but they were beating their breasts and tearing their hair while they cried our rhinegold our rhinegold stolen stolen what have they suffered the rhinegold to be stolen asked wotan in alarm tis as they said for i stopped and questioned them they said that the dwarf albrecht had seized upon the treasure and fled away to his earth caverns where he was even now making the magic ring of power he has set himself up as king of the nibelungs and he purposes to rule the whole world the giants fafner and fasolt leaned eagerly forward and drank in every word of loki's story as indeed he had intended they should ah that would be a prize worth having they exclaimed rubbing their huge hands mighty wotan if thou wilt wrest this treasure from the nibelung and give it to us we will release the goddess but wotan again grew disturbed and silent he knew that the gold rightfully belonged to the rhine daughters and that it would prove a danger even to the gods themselves unless it were returned the giants saw their advantage and followed it up decide for yourselves they said laying bold hands upon freya our work is done and we claim the reward either this maiden or the rhinegold and until you decide she must follow us to the frost land and unmindful of her cries of distress the giants bore freya away across the cliffs and down the mountain side the gods standing powerless to prevent as they stood gazing in dismay a thin mist arose from the valleys and it seemed to touch all the gods with blight as it were a frost for the goddess of youth and beauty was gone and old age had already begun to lay hand upon those that remained come this will never do exclaimed loki in jeering tones will you stand in your tracks and let old age blight you and then he began to taunt each of the gods separately as was his wont look cried fricka wife of wotan the golden apples even now are withering wotan husband behold thy doom see how thy compact hath wrought ruin and wreck for us all wotan started up fired by a sudden resolution up loki he commanded follow me we must fare to the caverns of night and seize upon this gold and then asked loki the rhine daughters implored thine aid wilt thou restore it to them tis idle talk retorted wotan moodily freya the goddess of youth and beauty must be ransomed else we shall all perish then let us hence said loki who had gained the point at which he had aimed from the outset let us hence i know a cleft in the rock which serves as a chimney for the nibelung's forge fires perchance he is even now hammering out the ring of power come let us descend into his cavernous dwelling so saying the god of fire wrapped his mantle about him and set forth closely followed by wotan with his dread spear of authority as two simple wayfarers they travelled down the rocky chasm down 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 and still down while the hammering from the forges grew louder and the sulphurous smoke came curling up more and more thickly till it would have suffocated any one but a god at last they emerged into a huge cave around which hurried hundreds of queer little people each as ugly and crooked and dirty as albrecht they were blowing the fires pounding away with huge masses of metal or scurrying about with armloads of gold silver and precious stones just then the two wayfarers heard a quarrelling in a side passage of the cave when in came albrecht himself dragging another dwarf shrieking by the ear it was mime his own brother but that made no difference with albrecht where's the helmet you rogue he said it shall not be well with your skin if you don't give it up mercy mercy howled mime the tears making little furrows down his dirty face i haven't got it done yet yes you have what is that that you are trying to hide in your hands give it to me i say and albrecht seized the object which mime had just dropped in terror ah just as i thought continued the stronger brother here is the magic helmet all complete and this sly knave thought to keep it for himself 
but I shall pay him for his treachery. Hark, you rascals, he continued, turning to all the dwarfs. I am your king. You must henceforth serve me alone, and pile up all your treasure in the royal vaults. I have this day obtained the powers of magic, which make you my servants. At this moment you see me not, but I shall make myself felt among you, I promise you and with this speech he clapped the helmet upon his head and instantly vanished but in his stead there came a pillar of mist and out of the mist came his voice sternly commanding them to obey then the sharp lashes of a whip were heard right and left and mime fell groaning to the ground while the others retreated in terror seemingly driven along a narrow way on the far side of the cavern albrecht was beginning his reign with a vengeance meanwhile the two celestial visitors had stood unnoticed in a side passage while they debated as to the best means of making their presence known albrecht came back in his true shape carrying the helmet in his hand fondling the ring upon his finger and chuckling with glee then he espied the two gods and his brow wrinkled darkly why come you to my caverns he demanded know you not that i am king here and that strangers are not welcome we have but come to see some of the marvels of which we have heard so much said wotan pacifically hm said albrecht you look quiet enough but i think i know you both yet i fear you not whether gods or men for i am master here and what if we are indeed gods dear albrecht said loki taking off his mantle see i am the god of fire and your best friend do i not keep all your forges going yes that may be true retorted alberic but for all that i fear neither you nor wotan the mighty with this ring made from the rhinegold i can defy you all alberic's accustomed low cunning had vanished before his sudden access of power he was no match for the crafty god loki oh what a beautiful ring exclaimed the latter bending forward admiringly is it really made from the far-famed rhinegold it is said alberic swelling up i made it myself and its possession gives me everything in the world except love but some people think that love is the chief thing said loki pooh that's because they haven't the gold i have the two do not go together anyway and never will as for me give me gold and power and he kissed the ring but what if someone stole the ring while you slept persisted loki they couldn't retorted the dwarf quickly see this helmet that silly brother of mine yonder in the corner has just made it for me out of some more of this fine rhinegold with it i can change myself into any form i choose and defy the slyest of robbers oh that cannot be replied loki only the gods can do such things unless i saw such a marvel with my own eyes i never would believe it alberich looked with scorn upon this doubting fellow then willing to prove his boast he put the helmet upon his head and muttered a few words instantly he was gone and in his stead a huge serpent came wriggling along the floor stretching its hideous jaws toward wotan and loki the latter fled in pretended terror while wotan laughed calmly the snake then disappeared and the dwarf once more stood before them now do you doubt my power he asked proudly oh it was wonderful exclaimed loki rolling his eyes i couldn't have believed it possible but i should think it would be a great deal harder to turn yourself into something small not at all replied the nibelung watch this and before the gods were aware he was gone again they looked high and low and there among the small stones a toad came hopping toward them quick put your foot on him exclaimed loki wotan put his boot upon the toad and instantly it was gone and in its place alberich lay struggling vainly to get out let me up you are crushing me screamed the dwarf not until you give us every bit of the rhinegold the helmet and the ring said wotan you can have all but the helmet and the ring and there's a lot of it beautiful gold whined alberich no all of it said wotan you can have the helmet too oh you're smashing me the ring and all i tell you here loki bind him with that rope 
"'Then take the gold, the helmet and the ring!' cried the dwarf despairingly. They bound him and let him up. As soon as he could catch his breath, he continued, "'Take the ring and all, but listen well to what I say. My curse rests upon it forever. Cursed be he who owns it, whether eating or sleeping or waking. Cursed be he and all his, whether God or devil.' sorrow and unhappiness shall go with this gold through all the ends of the earth notwithstanding this dread curse the gods seized the ring from off his finger and lost no time in making off with the treasure leaving the dwarf grovelling upon the floor and muttering fierce words against them all their care now was to ransom their sister and drive away the mists of old age on their way up the mountain height they met the two giants bearing away the struggling freya in their clutches hold commanded wotan bear her no farther we have brought the gold to ransom her is it the far-famed rhine gold asked fafner see for yourselves said loki casting the glittering heap upon the earth in all the world ye will not find its like the giants gazed greedily upon the hoard and drew near to parley "'Tis indeed a wonderful treasure,' they said, "'but the mass must equal in height and breadth "'the stature of this comely goddess.' "'So be it,' answered Wotan, "'and he commanded that staves be set upright in the ground "'and that the gold be heaped between them. "'Thor and Fro and others of the gods "'had now arrived upon the scene, "'all overjoyed at the prospect of Freya's release, "'for already the blighting mist was beginning to lift.' though it yet concealed the fair towers of valhalla meanwhile loki had been careful to withhold the ring and the helmet from the rest of the hoard which was now quickly heaped up between the upright staves at last just as the gold was exhausted the pile rose above the top of freya's head here take the treasure said wotan and release our sister unto us nay not so said fafner i see a hole in the heap and uh, through it gleams the goddess's hair brighter than any gold you must fill the hole cast on the helmet which yonder loki is bearing wotan could scarce restrain his rage at this rude bartering of his sister while the impetuous thor fingered his mighty hammer nervously but wotan saw it was useless to refuse he made a sign of command to the unwilling loki and the latter cast the helmet on the heap fafner again walked around it looking closely on every side ah he exclaimed here is just one more little crack but through it i can see the gleam of the goddess's lovely eyes you must place the ring here to make the ransom complete never cried wotan furiously very well then we shall be forced to take the goddess with us and once more Fasolt laid his rude hands upon the shrinking maiden. Thereupon a great tumult began. The voices of the gods rose in entreaty to Wotan to give up the ring and save their sister and themselves. Thor sprang forward with uplifted hammer, while the hoarse voices of the giants bade defiance to them all. Again the dread mist crept up from the valleys, and darkness descended from the clouds still a wotan remained defiant he was turning away in anger from the tumult when out of a cleft in the rock a weird bluish light broke forth and there emerged a woman of dignified and noble mien her long black hair swept upon the ground and her flowing robe seemed made of all the leaves and growing things of the soil she was erda the spirit of mother earth gifted with wisdom and foresight such as was not given even to the gods themselves erda stretched her hand out warningly toward wotan yield o wotan she cried escape the curse of the ring and all the hopeless woe it entails who art thou boding spirit demanded wotan and in a chanting voice came back the reply all that was i know all that is i know all that ever shall be done this as well i know erda the name i bear the fates my daughters are danger threatens dire this has drawn me near hearken 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 all that is shall end heed ye well ere dawn of doom beware the cursed ring 
as the chant ended the bluish light died away and with it vanished the warning figure oh stay dread spirit cried wotan more would i learn but only silence answered him and after gazing into the darkness in anxious thought he turned suddenly and approached the giants here is the ring said he sternly drawing it from his finger and placing it upon the heap be gone and leave us our sister but a curse has fallen upon the gold and so it proved the gods themselves were witness of the first fruits of the curse for as the two giants fell greedily to work gathering up the treasure a dispute arose fasolt claimed that fafner was taking more than his rightful share they came to blows over it when fafner smote fasolt to the ground with a blow so heavy that it killed him then the victor unmindful of his deed hastily gathered up all the wealth and departed while the gods stood around silent and amazed that the curse should descend so swiftly and wotan foresaw in this tragic moment the awful doom which was one day to descend upon them all because the gold had not been restored to the rhine daughters but his gloomy thoughts were broken just then by a mighty crash like a peal of thunder there upon the cliff leading to the beautiful new palace which had cost so much stood thor wielding his hammer upon the encircling clouds flashes of lightning burst forth the clouds and mist rolled away revealing valhalla in all its splendour while from their feet in dazzling radiance gleamed a rainbow bridge leading across the chasm to its portals come let us go over to our new home said wotan taking his wife fricka by the hand and followed by the laughing gods and goddesses who surrounded freya fairest of the group they went across the rainbow bridge and entered the stately halls of valhalla the setting sun shone brightly on the scene the clouds had melted away into blue sky leaving a soft radiance which seemed to encircle their new home in a halo of delight the evening fragrance of the valleys came up to them redolent with the springtime of growing things as they trod the shining pathway the jests and merriment of the gods showed their gladness in this new home that had been made for them at so great a cost still wotan was not happy he had decided seemingly for the best but as he crossed the arching bridge he heard voices from the valley far beneath him rising like the tones of conscience or the warnings of fate it was the mournful song of the rhine daughters rhine gold purest gold how fair thy gleam thy wealth untold but now thy rays light not the stream and give them back give back the gleam rhine gold end of story one